you know, I want I want to switch for a second. Uh, when 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 you participated in getting the the uh, the original cartel leaders arrested, and I'm talking about Carol Quintero, uh, Felix Gallardo, and and Ernesto Fonseca. What became of their cartel, and what happened afterwards? Because that leads me to kind of where you were going with the borders. How many cartels were left? How many sprang up? And who's in power today? In the old days, when I was uh, with the DEA and at the time that Camarena was picked up, there was only one cartel in Mexico. It was the Guadalajara cartel run by uh, Fonseca. He was the boss of bosses. Yes, there were other bosses. There was you had Felix Gallardo, who was basically running in a lot of the cocaine into Mexico. You had Carlos Quintero, who was basically uh, growing, cultivating a lot, a lot of the marijuana that was coming here. Um, and you had others, you know, that were running different parts of the cartels in different parts of the country. But there was only one cartel. And that old man ran with an iron fist. Fonseca basically got them all together, and they said, we're not going to interfere with the citizens of Mexico. I don't want to hear that you guys are picking up girls and raping them. I don't want to hear that you're just killing people down the street for no reason. If anybody's going to be murdered, we're going to have a little meeting here. If somebody falls, is not being blamed by the rules here, by the cartel rules, we'll bring him in and, and we'll decide who we're going to kill. And he ran it with an iron fist. He did. So... They get involved in the kicky thing, and they were brought in by the DFS and the Mexican government and put together with our government. And so we destroy them. We go after them and we destroy the Guadalajara cartel. So what happens? Then you have other little cartels spring up. Then you have the Bell cartel, and you have the Zeta cartel, and you have the Nueva Generación cartel, and um, you name it. There were 50, 20 cartels all fighting with each other to, to be the number one cartel. But the Sinaloa cartel was the one that won over because they were receiving the total protection of the Mexican government. They became the most powerful cartel. Then now we have another cartel, which is Jalisco Nueva Generación cartel. Now understand. The current government right now, the government officials of this government, are protecting the Sinaloa cartel. The former government, which was the PRI government, which are out of power now, they were protecting the Francisco Neva Generación cartel. So government officials and politicians are involved with the cartel. So now what do you have? A war going on in Mexico between the Jalisco Nueva Generación cartel with the Sinaloa cartel. You have the Chapitos which are uh, Chapo Guzman's sons, now being uh, protected by the Sinaloa cartel, being part of the Sinaloa cartel, fighting against the Jalisco Nueva Generación cartel, which is Mesos cartel, and there's a war going on all the time to take control of all the trafficking in the country. But they're both doing very well. They're both making billions of dollars. And how are they doing it? By controlling the border. They're doing it by human trafficking. They're doing it by bringing in very dangerous drugs. And what is really bad for, for, for the United States is now the Chinese are coming into the picture. Now you have the Chinese, the Yakuza and the CCP, which is the Communist Chinese Party, working with the car Mexican cartels. And it's the Chinese that have provided the precursor drugs that the Mexicans are using to basically manufacture fentanyl and methamphetamines, which are deadly drugs. One pill will kill. And a lot of the drugs are being laced with, and the cocaine is being laced now with fentanyl, which is to kill the drug. That is what's going on. We, between, in, in, between August 20, 2022 and August 20, no, August 21 and August 22, we lost 216,000 Americans of drug overdoses. 70,000 Americans died last year 
of fentanyl overdoses alone. We have had more people die in one year, Sean, than people died in the Vietnam War, the Afghanistan War, and the Iraq War. That is insane. And nobody's saying anything about it. But the poor people in the ghettos are dying. You can't walk in downtown LA anymore without stepping over people that are, you know, passed out, drugged out. And a lot of our crime is being committed by people under the influence of drugs or people that are mentally ill because of the use of drugs. Nobody says that. What do we hear? Let's take away the guns. Let's take away the guns. Why don't they say let's take away the cars too? More people die because of car accidents than die of gun gun accident, uh, gun violence. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if we're going to take away the guns from the citizens and blame the guns for the murders, then why don't we take away the cars and blame the cars for killing people? It's not the guns, and it's not the cars, as we know. It is the uh, evil minds, the sick minds, the drug-induced minds that are causing all the death and criminalization that's going on in this country. People walking into schools and taking out kids like they did in Uvalde. These people are not normal. It's not the gun. We're not going to blame the AR-15 that took out the people. We're going to blame the guy that's pulling the trigger. And what do politicians say? Let's take away the guns. You know why? Because they want more control. And we should never have a one-party system. Every party wants to get in there and stay in power forever. This is why we need two parties to have the check and balances. You know, this is why America has been so great. But we need to stop weaponizing uh, our agencies, supporting one, 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 one party over the other party. We need to do away with it. That is serious criminal, criminal criminalization that we're basically supporting right now. And we have. And like I said, I'm not blaming one party. I'm not political here. We, we've, been, we've had corruption in both parties, and we need to clean all that swamp out, all those corrupt politicians. When we identify a politician that's not working for his constituents, that's not working for the citizens, get him out. Get him out. You know? But no, they leave him in there, and they become more powerful and more corrupt. And our lobbyists, well, what is that? That's all corruption. They go pay some uh, some guy to to to, to, to uh, vote in favor of whatever it is, that, that should be permitted. But it's permitted in this country. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.